Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Health and Education meeting of May. Um, appreciate everyone being here, and particularly the Budget Committee and Chairman Ely. Always great to see you, and of course, School Board and Chairman Hodge. Always great to be here. Um, Mayor and Finance Director are with us this evening. The purpose of uh, us meeting together, just to just to review, is to look at and discuss the School Board budget request for this coming year. Take questions from Health and Education. Uh, committee members uh, at, at any time, really. Uh, questions and comments from budget uh, and other commissioners, perhaps, that are here. And, of course, school board members, uh, all are appreciated. Please don't let me overlook anyone. Uh, it's a big room. Mayor Burgess is very, very good at looking around a room and finding people. I am terrible at it, but I'll do my best. And if you, if you um, just call my name if you want to say something and I, and I miss you. Um, first order of business, uh, before we get started with uh, uh, Mr. Sandvig and uh, Director Odom, is to approve the minutes and uh, health and ed. I uh, need a motion to do that very thing. Thank you, Ms. Cook. A second? Mr. Soriano, thank you. Any discussion? All in favor of minute approval, please say aye. 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 And okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sandy guy, I assume you and Mr. Odom are going to go first. I want to remind uh, something I did not know until about an hour ago, and I'm just passing this along. This is not, do not interpret this in any way whatsoever. But the Budget Committee is scheduled to look at a, at whatever we do tonight, uh, tomorrow night. I'm just passing that along. For what it's worth, and I assume 530, room 205. Thank you, Ms. Ely. Mr. Sanding, Mr. Odom, uh, are we going to do amendments first? Is that is that the plan? Um, mm, we were going to explain the budget, and then we'll do the amendments, if it's okay with you. Okay, that's, that's, that's no, fine. No amendments yes, tonight. There's no amendments. Okay, well, you, you did send out some other items There's here. Other the, items. The, the other budgets, other than the GPS budget. Okay, are we going to, we're going to discuss these at some point. Yes, sir. Okay. So you want to go right into the um, budget, and uh, I think everybody has a copy of just about everything. You have a seven-page uh, cover sheet, a couple of graphs, which uh, explain, of course, the cover sheet, and then uh, four pages of uh, budget summarized. Um, and you might want to keep that in front of you as we go. Um, gentlemen, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh Chairman Jordan, there's a, there is one of eight pages in this tonight. But, um, he's got some other. You, sh you should have one. I, you should have one at each place. That the pages that we're kind of covered tonight. Uh, thank you, Commissioner uh, Jordan, and uh, for other commissioners here this evening, Mayor Burgess. Uh, our goal tonight is to answer as many possible questions as we can uh, relating to. If you have sent us questions ahead of time or we heard about questions we're going to attempt to answer that if you, if you don't have an answer tonight ask us please we'll do our best to try to to answer that just quickly as we provided you to vice commission meeting uh, again our, our school budget if you look at the last year 2012-13 uh, it was just completed Rutherford county schools was per pupil twelve hundred and eighty dollars per people less than the state average as an operating budget and since 2001-2002, um, you and the school boards have done a very good job. That's even prior to my time, but even considering inflation, the per pupil expenditure is $56 less per pupil than inflation would have been for Rutherford County funds for the operating budget. This year, our budget that you're looking at tonight is increased by 2.4%. And just remember that uh, our Student growth this year was 2.9%, 1,140 students additional this year. Um, ADM funding, average daily membership, which is primarily our source of funding from the state, runs one year behind. And so uh, you really will not pick up for those until the next year. Growth funds are supposed to take care of that, but we'll talk about that. Let's go to, uh, let's look at our questions and, and begin if we could. First question that we kind of had, what was the BEP generated positions? And, and this was asked us. Redford County Schools placed the employees at the schools to educate our students, not in the central office. A BEP formula generates for us 104.7 certified supervisor or system-wide position. We have 50.6 in our budget. And that number includes our seven classified supervisors. So we're running about half 
And a, a few years ago, the Tennessean did a survey of surrounding counties around Rutherford County, and Rutherford County had one of the lowest supervisory ratios. So um, I don't think there's not an issue there with that one. In 2014-15, the Basic Education Plan, or BEP allocation, generated 2,514 certified positions. Uh, we have 2,951 as of this time. Uh, it doesn't include growth that you have. Again, you're running that year behind. Um, and these are used to meet BEP class size mandates, cover other mandated programs, uh, and then to offer that high quality program. And let me say another thing or two about that. Some of these will become evident as we go down through this tonight and talk about where some of these other positions are. You have to realize that you're all of your special education department teachers, your ESL department teachers, um, the state mandates that we do this or federal mandates it in some instances, but they generally do not lower your pupil teacher ratio because they are pull out programs, auxiliary services. You, you cannot count them directly to do that one to 20 or one to 25 or one to 30, whatever that ratio happens to be. So uh, it's hard to look at those numbers. Uh, I have looked over, over my time when I was back in instruction, I used to help Mr. Gill and them to calculate this. I have found um, that a pretty good average for us to look at very often was somewhere in the neighborhood of one to 22. Your kindergarten through third grade is one to 20, uh, four through six is one to 25. And then when you go up to uh, uh, seven through 12, it's, it's one to 30. Um, your career and technical education, which has been one of the largest growing for us in recent years in high school, is also a one to 20 ratio. The other thing that changes our BEP very often, um, and it's not always when 20 more students come in. If, you're, if your school is running, say you were doing your K3 average, if you're running 19.2 as your average now, it's very often not when 20 additional students come in. We very often have to employ a teacher when you have five, 10, 12 come in because it throws you over that average ratio. So uh, again, that's why we kind of use something in that one to 22 to account for that. So uh, let me kind of, I'll go through some of these and we will uh, we'll kind of give you a chance then to come back and answer any of them. Some of the unfunded and underfunded state mandates, thought we'd bring that to you. We had some questions about that. Um, the state budget cut statewide growth BEP funds from 27 million in 13-14 to 15 million for 2014-15. Now, what is the growth fund? The state puts a, um, I like to call it a, a little pie of money, whatever they choose to put into it. And your fastest growing school systems then, based on their percentage growth, gets a slice of that pie. Uh, and it doesn't go up uh, if other than what your share of that percentage might be. Uh, as early as four to five years ago, we were getting somewhere in the neighborhood to four to five million dollars uh, in growth funds. And remember, the growth funds really are the funds that's supposed to help you deal with the growth in the next year because ADM funds, average date of membership, runs one year behind as they did that calculus. So that's supposed to help cover that. So what we're seeing that is since five million of the 14, 15 growth funds are non-recurring, the state is saying that in 15, 16, they're probably telling us they may drop it to 10 million. 27 million, just a few years ago, down to 10 million. Um, if our projected growth were funded as it had been in the past, we would have budgeted 3.2 million or more instead of the 1.6 million. This is <coughs> devastating to Lawford County if we continue to grow if the state's not going to fund the growth up front because it leaves us to try to come up with it locally until that ADM hits the next year. Of course, our problem is you have a next year that's similar to that one or maybe even larger. Uh, this 1.6 million will only generate about 32 to 40 percent of the state portion of the BEP. So we'll be short between 60 and 68 percent of the state growth portion for our growth as students will have to cover by local portions. So, so basically what we're saying, if they do not going to pay us up front, or they're going to reduce that amount, then that throws more of it again in the 60 to 68% range. If you look at the 2012-2013 state report card, 55% of the cost of the per pupil expenditure for Rutherford County was furnished by the state. So any way you look at this, um, the state is not stepping up as quickly to cover that. 
class size penalties? Well, the class size penalty, you, well, I don't know any district that, that subjects themselves to that because the class size pen penalties runs from $55,000 to $75,000, depending on elementary, high school. And then you, I mean, you could pay the penalty, but you still would, they could come back and assess you again. So they wrote that law so severe so that you just, you're not going to go with class size. I don't know anyone that lets that happen. You, you could employ a teacher for the same or less than what you could pay the penalty, but they just made it that still. You're referring to the number of students in the classroom. The pupil teacher ratio. Before we go to B, um, let's see if we have any questions on A, okay. Ms. Totem. I don't know if we do or not, but we may have comments or questions. Is that different now than it was last year, year before, year before? Is it different? The growth is what's different. I mean, the, the difference is in the growth, whereas they had, in that pie that I was talking about, they had 27 million. Now we're talking 15 million, which is almost half, and then they're anticipating maybe in another year cutting it to 10. So all of the fastest growing school systems in the state, when they calculate every how many they let have it, again, that pie slice declines. We'll not be the only one uh, that'll be in that situation. Yes, sir, yeah. Mr. Mean, Schaefer. 15 uh, billion is this coming here. If you have another school system in the county, you don't have split that with them, do you, it's just for the county system? It's separate by system. The 15 million is the whole state yeah. pot. What our portion of No, we do not. The right, because they, they treat it by school system. You know, and one of the unfortunate things here is, um, as best we can tell now, they only treat it based on percentage growth without looking at the number of student growth. Um, you will have sometimes um, a Williamson County or a Wilson County that will grow at a, a tenth or two tenths or three tenths fashion we do but it's not the same number of students because when you start taking uh, 41,000 students like Wilson and Williamson are both in the 20 something thousand range it's a very different and so their percentage may be higher but they're not going to deal with as many students as we have to so that there's not a it's not totally equitable in that distribution is what I'm saying I guess okay B, RTI squared, response to intervention squared. There's a new process that the state has adopted to identify students with special education and to do provide remediation for other students in the system. Um, we're expected to cover this with our normal BEP generated teaching position. The other thing that's a, a really big uh, unfunded mandate from this is, and is that uh, we're required to use a nationally normed independent screening tool for these students. And it's supposed to be given three times a year to determine how a student is progressing and not progressing. And the state did some bidding, they haven't released it all yet, but anything that we're hearing is that will cost us between $4.50 and $6 per pupil, basically just to purchase and use this universal screener. I honestly like RTI better than the old process because some of, some of you have been educators sitting up here, and the old process was that before a student could receive special education services, there were some technicalities. They would take your IQ, they would take your performance in reading or math, they tested you in both, and you had to have one standard deviation discrepancy before you could be technically labeled as maybe special ed. RTI, response to intervention, allows us, encourages us to pick up students much more quickly before they get behind. You could see a student sometimes that was in kindergarten or first grade, and you knew it was coming, but they technically couldn't qualify. You couldn't get a standard deviation until they got enough age on them to do. This is a much better plan, but the state in doing this and switching to it, and it's happening uh, across the country to do this, really is not funding much of it. They're saying, hey, these are the rules. You've got to do it, but uh, do it within your own means. It's basically what, what they're telling us. Spectrum is another area. Spectrum is your gifted program. In Tennessee, the federal government does not call uh, giftedness uh, a disability. In Tennessee, and I, it may have been 25 years ago now, I do remember when it came in, been a long time ago, that it was added to the Tennessee law for gifted education became a technical disability to qualify for funds and provide teachers for that. Um, you know, they, don't, they do not sign us here. We no longer get state BESP special ed funds for this program. 
again we have to cover that with our own funds um, most of these do not reduce your pupil teacher ratio in middle schools they teach some of our english classes uh, high school you couldn't find one teacher to be certified in all subjects you know because they have to have that certification elementary school we have 21 teachers uh, in that program uh, roughly you're looking at 1.3 million dollars probably there that the state requires that there's not going to be there's not funds for this is not new this has been in place for a while but what I'm trying to address is that some of that you can't make it on just the state DEP numbers so that that's what I'm kind of trying to relate to you some of these um, the nurses, the BEP formula and number D, BEP formula will give Rutherford County 13.5 nurses for our system. We'll have 48 next year. Uh, let, me, let me explain something to you. We have 38, 36 schools that have a student that has, has to be served for DISTAT. DISTAT is um, seizures. Um, so what happens is, that within, if, if the student has a seizure, um, within three minutes, they have to have a rectal dose that'll calm them down. That's not optional. That's what the state tells us. We can't, you, you, how are you gonna serve them? I mean, they may be funding that 13.5. And if you happen to see our board meeting a, a week ago or so, you saw that in John Coleman, uh, right about three weeks ago now at the end of school we had a little boy in fifth grade that actually went into cardiac arrest stopped breathing and implemented the code blue and they literally had to use the AED device on this child I, I was saying I remember a few years ago I was telling Mr. Phillips there when we there was some difficulty people said you need AED devices in school listen they brought this boy's heartbeat back his breathing the nurse the SRO kicked in to do this we, Mr. Hodge received an email from having to be with, it was his uncle, wasn't it? His uncle was an ER room doctor. He said, I cannot believe that a school system had a code blue procedure in place and that y'all performed it as well as that you did, much less have AED device in the school. They, he said, you literally saved my nephew's life. And so it's a tremendous thing to do. So, I mean, um, what's a nurse worth? <laughs> A nurse is, is worth to this family all in the world. And so, but anyway, the state doesn't fund it as so, and, and there were court rulings that that is a reasonable accommodation for us to make. Right. And Jeff says, again, the courts require for the distats and that sort of thing to serve it. And some diabetic, some, um, and, and, I, and if you really want to know a break, breakdown, I've got it. How many we have on continuous tube feeding, how many is on a, a ventilator. Uh, you know, we've got this basically in place, but you have, we have 37 schools that require either full-time nurse or something to meet these requirements that's done. There, there are nine schools that still do not have one-to-one -one nurse to the kids, and some of them are large schools, middle schools. They just do not happen to have a, a child that has to have that full-time nurse there at this time. We go on field trips, and nurse has to go, because you cannot deny these students uh, the right to go. So sometimes we have to cover while that if some's on a field trip. So just to let you know one of the things we do. Um, the other thing um, in E, special ed, pre-K, state and federal, 69378 in federal funds for 2013. We do not get any zero BEP funds from the state for these state and federal funds for special ed, pre-K. Some of you may not know this, that we have 11 teachers, 17 EAs that handle this, but as a school system, we're responsible for students that qualify from age three to age 21. So we, and we have students in all those ranges. Uh, the hearing is impaired, that sort of thing, pick up at age three. You have students that may complete their high school years, but if they don't get a regular high school diploma, they can stay until they attain the age of 22. So we have students in all of those ranges from three up until the age of 22. So again, that's additional people <coughs> beyond what the state's going to fund you in dealing with that, but it's required, again, by federal law that you do that. Um, ELF is one of the huge things, I guess, in recent years. And, and uh, 
There's no BEP funding for the two months of medical <coughs> insurance, 2.7 million for 14-15. In other words, if teachers have their 10 months, the two months for the summer, there's no state help or anything in the state insurance plan or anything that covers those other additional two months. I can tell you that school directors across the state, this is an issue every, every year. We bring it up continually. And um, the answer we typically get is we'll take a look at that. <laughs> that's all, all we've gotten is, is a look <laughs> over the years. And so, but that's the situation we run into there for funding. Before I go to three, do you want to see, Mr. Jordan, if there are additional questions? Yes, sir, on absolutely. Number two, there may be some things there. Anything B through F, the committee or budget committee as well? Okay. Um, the 2014-15 the general purpose school fund budget fund 141, and this version of the 2014-15 GPS budget has 306,688,721 in expenditures and $293,859,003 in revenues. This leaves us a budget shortfall of $12,829,718, which is actually $3,557,000. Uh, $1,122 less than the previous version. Um, Ms. Nolan, Mr. Sandvig will be amending the 13-14 revenues in June, finalizing 14-15 revenues. Our target would be to have a shortfall that would not be over 11600000 or lower. Um, we just can't deficit spend over the long term. That's a Washington strategy that just doesn't work very well. Um, and I know y'all ran into some of that countywide last year to balance the budget. Had to go into ending fund balance. We did go into ending fund balance. Uh, we've had a couple of things that really bumped that up and recently, and you, you had to deal with it. Uh, we had a $93,000 to replace a chiller at uh, Blackman Middle School. Uh, we've got another series of those that were in that model. There's about four more of those uh, that are in that model that are not going to last too long, but when one of those hit, you know, you're close to $100,000 anytime that happens. So um, those unexpected things occur. Because that's what ending fund balance is for. But it does reduce your ending fund balance for the next year that you have to make that expenditure. Um, and there is a, a motion for that one. Whenever you get ready for that, that kind of explains it. That would be... Um, I think would be one that whenever you get ready to address that we can come back. We have a recommended motion if you, whenever you're ready for that. Number four is the cafeteria uh, fund budget, which is 143. Um, the first version of the 1415 centralized cafeteria fund budget has 17,630,000 in revenues and 18,333,292 in expenditures. This $703,292 deficit will be taken from fund balance. And that this budget will be finalized in May after April financial figures are available. The one thing that I know most of all you realize, but our people that may be listening on television or whatever may not understand, because this is a federal lunch program, any monies that come into the federal lunch program must be spent on the federal lunch program. So even in years that you have a surplus, you can't transfer it somewhere else. Now, what we have done in recent years, you know, it hasn't been very many years ago. I can remember Mr. Gill, Mr. Sandvig made this change where we centralized the county to help the schools that didn't feed enough students very well to, to, to make it profitable for those. We were having to subsidize it with GPS funds, but they went a step further, and so your repairs in your cafeteria now and you're, when you required new equipment. When the federal government came down and said, take out all of your frying pans in the lunches, and they did. If you remember, real good equipment, we had to surplus because everything's got to be baked or something. When we had to replace that, uh, again, we went into the cafeteria fund, and at that time, there was some surplus to try and went ahead and paid for it rather than come back to the taxpayer to cover that. You know, I, I can, about 43% of the students in Rutherford County classify as free reduced. Uh, that number has been increasing about 1% per year for the last several years. So that tends to go up for us. Um, I, I would say 
the, the board's already looked at this. It, we will probably next year, probably have to, not for 14, 15, but for the next year, have to look at a cost increase or a lunch price increase for our students because you, you can't deficit spend in that. So uh, just kind of a year out note. Um, our prices now are, that I think that's the reduced price. Okay, breakfast a dollar and a quarter, lunch is two dollars, and fifth. Through, through fifth and six through twelve is two dollars and twenty five cents for a full pay price, which is still a good deal. You can't go to McDonald's or somewhere else and get that, but it's a, I think a very much of a likelihood there will have to be an increase in another year uh, because of this this deficit. Um, number five, fourteen fifteen capital funds project one seventy seven. The estimated property tax revenue for this fund is $2,366,877. This revenue and $33,548 from fund balance will cover $2,350,000 in items from Mr. Clark's project list and the trustees commission for fiscal 14-15. So that, that budget will be is available if you look at to the fund 177. You're familiar with this. This is where we do roof repairs, road repairs, those sort of things. And I will have to say some of your special expenditures has made a difference. And if you noticed in the budget this year, there's no utility increase this year. And we were able this year, as cold as it was, down to zero some days, we were able to make it through this year unless something really bad happens uh, between now and should be out. Um, we're going to be able to make that, and it doesn't look like we need to increase it for next year. When you approve putting in the devices to turn the lights off, electrical savings, um, some of our water savings are beginning to pay dividends back to us. Dealing with that, certainly geothermal is beginning to pay on that. Now, the unknown here is, gosh, I heard the other day that TVA might be looking at, I even heard a figure as much as 10% with the next few years. So I don't know if they would come out with a two or three in another year or something, but we just don't know that. You know, as it stands now, we didn't really increase that part of our budget. Um, the number six kind of tells you a little bit following up from the capital funds on five. This is what we plan to do. Roof replacements and repairs at Smyrna Primary, Thurman Francis, Oakland High, Blackman High, Buchanan, and the HVA integrated control system for black and middle schools are the highest priority project on Mr. Carter's proposed capital project list for 14-15. You remember back in the winter because of some of the old coal tar and pitch roofs that we had, the one in Thurman French and literally split on one wing from one end to the other, you know, in the rain, the water got in, destroyed library books, we had to do carpet and everything in that. So we have, I, I don't know exactly how many of those roofs left, uh, but they're getting of the age and issue that over time um, those roofs are going to dry out and they're going to crack if we see something like what we had last winter. So we're anticipating some of that and trying to, to address those that you see in, in number six there. So that, that's, that's what that is to address those. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Odom. Yes, are, are, are there questions, uh, committee on four, five, or six um, before he gets to the fund? And seven. And Mr. Clark is here if you have a question, if you'd like to know, he can certainly help us answer that. Did all the projects on the uh, capital projects list get done this last year? And so I think we're redoing some uh, parking lots and some, actually we had a couple of roofs that we were doing and some other stuff. This is a the new list before. Summer this finished. summer, I know. Mr. Clark, you want to answer Mr. Sandlin's question. All of those projects are on the list are either complete or in progress at this time. We'll give you a report if you like that. I mean, we can tell you at your meeting. So week. we're looking at a, just a shade over a half a million dollars in doing these projects right here in for the 14-15 uh, year. Right. Yep. In order to get you know, everything. To get everything if we do all of these. Right. Um, it, this... Um, well, we kind of address it in the next resolution. It, it'll sh it shows up a little bit there, what we're talking about. Uh, number seven, the Board of Education approved at one of their recent meetings 
that, that we would like to try to see the original funds that we have was five cents of the property tax rate uh, would be dedicated to these roofs and things. Um, and, and it's amazing how much, how many square feet was it on that thing we looked up? Was it 900? How many square feet was that? Do you remember? We saw Seven million. How much? Seven million. The square feet of, of roofs, 46 schools, I mean of, of floor space and all Murphy County schools. And of course, we started with the five cents on the tax rate. We've added the new schools and the additions that we're dealing with. And of course, what happens, we, you get, kind of get the same money as you adjusted, but you really need more monies because your space is growing. And so the, what we would like to do is, uh, Rutherford County received a large increase in state funding for 7-8 with the state's BEP-2 funds. The Rough County Commission was able to move five cents in property tax revenues to fund 177 major capital projects for schools from the general purpose school budget. The Commission's goal was to use current property tax funds for re-roofing, uh, uh, HVAC systems, paving, and other pairs that were being funded with borrowed funds. And we totally supported this. It served us very well. We caught up with a lot of things. In 2007-8, this five cents covered $1,913,042 in expenditures for major capital repairs, and the schools built in the 1990s only had 140,000 budgeted for repairs. Six years later, this five cents has really dropped to 4.51 cents, and budgeted property taxes for 13-14 are 2,401,660. Those schools built in the 1990s and early years of the 21st century are now requiring some major repairs. We're failing, falling behind in these needed repairs and, and it would, the restoration of that 49 cents on the property tax would help us fund a 49 hundredths cents on these repairs for current revenues and avoid a need to use borrowed funds for these projects. Again, I think what we're in simplified terms are saying, what was five cents and covered the numbers of school at that time is really not adequate to cover what we have now and what's what's being done. So I hope we never go back to a situation again and get so many roofs leaking, because I can remember those days and how we dealt with it on an emergency by emergency basis. You were very wise for that money when you gave us that five cents. If it can be maintained, I think it'll save us some trouble down the road. You uh, have a Resolution, you're going to do that verbally, or you, you won't? Well, well, we we're have, going to come back to them anyway. Basically, this was a resolution that the board is sending you. This, this, this is uh, you know, we didn't write a resolution, but it did <coughs> resolve that, that we fund the full five cents of the property tax rate. That's that's what it would be for this fund 177. Okay, questions? Committee, Ms. Cook. Would it be desirable, but to certify, as you do the certified tax rate each year, that's what's resulted in um, that so value know, being a little we different. Do we know the schools coming on board. We do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We do. Yeah. If there was some way to figure in, and I'm going to call it a percentage, I, I'm, this is over and above me, but anyway, to figure in, every time we come in with a new school, that we add a quarter of a percent or something like that to take care of this yeah, I mean, it, it helps when we can do that. You know, I mean, we're, we realize this. I agree with you fully. Um, we're just saying right now, if we could help, if we're back at the five cents, it'd be a great place to start since that was the original intention, mm -hmm. I think, of the commission and the board at that time when they requested it. This is a thought that we can think about. Right. And it, it may be totally new to you tonight, <laughs> you know, so. Maybe catching some of you by surprise, but it, it is a, it's certainly a logical process. The original process was logical, and this is logical. It's worked to well. go back. It has worked extremely well, uh, I think, over the years, and saved us money. Because if you fix it before it does a lot of damage, you don't have that damage. Just like you ran into a Thurman Francis, and it's Smyrna Primary some damage there, and again some at Laverne Primary that we had during that cold spell. Those three schools all experienced those roof leaks due to the 
that coal and pitch tar roof splitting. That's exactly what happened. Your point is, I think, well taken. I, I, I don't know how long this five cents has been in effect. Other people have been here a lot longer than I have. Um, I know where it came from because Dr. Bullen's sitting right back there. So, I, uh, <laughs> but it, it has worked very well. But we do have a lot of square footage that we're using now, brand new stuff or five years old or whatever. And this has never gone up. So, as a matter of fact, it, 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 it has dropped uh, almost uh, by 0.5. So we need to restore that. And we just had a new high school of I don't know how many square feet, but Eagleville, Blackman Middle is coming on. Smyrna Primary has got new, new, new classroom space and others. So I don't know how long this has been in process, but I think before we had on the annex of Riverdale and Oakland, I believe this was in effect. Um, so anyway, when we go back to four and go through these and have motions and voting, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that, I guess. Okay, go ahead with and we We got the square feet off from the county insurance provided for us. That's an interesting, y'all would be interested in seeing that as commissioners to see how much you have with the total county as you have to talk to your constituents. It's an interesting figure. We had them break out just the schools and how many square feet, what the dollar value for each of those schools are. It's, it's a really interesting document for the schools, and I know it would be interesting to you uh, as a county as a whole to see. I think Ms. Cook makes a good point. I, I, uh, really, when, when the taxpayers build something, if we're, going, if we're going to treat it all of it the same, we probably ought to add something in. Now, whether that has to be done every year or not, and a, a quarter of a, of, a, of, a, of a cent or whatever, or half a cent, uh, is, is debatable. But it, it's something that certainly we ought to adjust. We, I, I think we should, anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't think we ought to just leave it the same five cents forever, no matter how many schools and how much square footage we've got. I don't think that makes any sense. But anyway, go ahead with number eight if you're ready. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Schaefer, yes sir. Yeah. Well, one reason why it's less than five cents is because every four years we're going to reappraisal. Yeah, the certified tax rate. Yeah. The certified rate's less than what the property tax rate. But the value of a penny has gone up because you can see now there's 500,000 more a year in there than there was seven years ago. So, you know, it's a play on both ways, and I think we need to look at both ways and not just and the cost of the, of the fence. And the cost, the cost of the repair is more than it was five years yeah. ago. In other words, yeah. the, the roof we bought five put, years ago. We put in metal roofs and geothermal <laughs> now, which are less I know. repairs. For our new ones. <clears throat> you know, we, we looked at, and several board members and we, uh, we're looking at adding metal roofs, and they, I mean, there's some firms that, um, that we're seeing in Gallatin, at Merrill Hyde, up in Macon County, and uh, over in um, Coffee County, some of them, they're adding metal roofs to old buildings. It's expensive, and you can't do it everywhere because sometimes the walls were not built to do that. But your initial cost is much higher, but just like the new schools were built, when you replace it, you may have 40 years out there rather than coming back at the 15 to 20 range and replacing another roof, you know, that's going to be higher than when you replaced it. Of course, we're, not, we're doing now putting a membrane roof down. The membrane roof certainly is white membrane, which helps reflect the heat, that sort of thing, and helps your air conditioning. And it is lasting better than the cold pitch and tar that we had. But, if you wanted to go there, you could certainly do it, and it would pay off in the long run, even at that. It's being done in some counties smaller than ours. Eight? I believe so, yes, sir. Eight is land for Whitworth Buchanan Middle School sixth grade annex. And you'll remember that when we purchased um, the property there, it's for a high school and for a middle school. And, of course, what we've discovered now is because of the the, the new developments in the Swanson, basically that, that, that out there in the Maples project is being added. We started looking when we were adding the, the sixth grade addition on at Blackman that this is probably a good idea. And so we did approach the Maples uh, family partnership. If w we need about five <coughs> more acres so that we can then accommodate, we could expand Whitworth Buchanan Middle, like we're doing at Blackman, plus still have room for the high school. 
So they approached us if they were ready, and you saw it in the paper, they're going to start <coughs> developing. That's the land immediately that joins ours. And so the price for that, for this was 70000 per acre. Um, we have to pay about $2,500 in surveying costs. Um, and we would recommend, or the board would recommend, that we go ahead and purchase that. It's not something we're going to build tomorrow, next year, or maybe even the year after, but it, it will be built. And once they put houses up to the, you know, the border, you'll not be able to do anything else there. And you, we'll find ourselves having to have totally new property and start again. So that we just think this is insurance. I mean, that's typically what we're saying here for that one. And I think number nine is things that will come up as amendments. In what order, Mr. Odom, would you like for us to consider this? You want to go back to three? You want to go back to four? Yeah, well, I mean, it's your meeting, so we'll 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 let we'll let your people choose, and we'll we'll adjust whatever it might be. Yes, sir. On number eight, there is that a done deal? I mean, is it a is it a y'all already purchased it? No, no, no. Uh, we had to assure them with a letter that we would the board and take it to the commission project and if it's approved we'll do this but um, they're going to be uh, they've got to know by sometime Mr. Young what was the kind of date they said that they needed to know by yesterday <laughs> uh, it was this summer that we had to make a commitment for the land five acres adjoining a piece of property that we uh, will have just mentioned we, we took the sewer to you know yeah. which made it more valuable uh, it just uh, what they're looking at now is what they can sell each lot for with about three houses to the acre at, I don't know 30,000 <laughs> a lot or something like that I'm, I'm on the low side. What is it? What is it? No, 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 it's significantly <laughs> but, higher than that uh, per lot. You know, I, I just I just wish uh, we had had the concept to purchase additional property when we initially did, but we were kind of locked in at that time, not Excuse thinking me. about making our middle schools that large. But it looks like with core facilities, you know how much it costs to put more cafeteria space and more core facilities in a building. It's certainly cheaper for us, even at paying this add-on than it is to go back to new buildings that include core. Ms. Nolan? Yes, sir. Ms. Nolan. Ms. Nolan. Yes. Okay. yes. We just um, had that bond issue sold last week, and in that was additional premium of about at least $500,000 that was not allocated to a project yet. That would be coming to y'all. So. That could pay for this property. Yes. And the mayor supports this concept too. We very much support this concept of this type of addition. The, um, the, the committee, and I think generally the budget committee too, and the commission obviously supported this concept at Blackman Middle uh, for exactly, I think, the reasons that you just stated a minute ago, um, that uh, five and a half acres, um, that's 70,000 an acre is $385,000 plus $2,500. Um, uh, we'll come back to this in, in just a moment, I assume. Um, Mr. Clardy can talk to you more about why we think we might need it based upon the high school, if you want to pursue that. He'll be glad to, to speak to that. We initially looked at the acreage that, you know, we had in the, in the plans we have, when we originally purchased that property, um, we had for the high school and the middle and kind of have the plot assignment for that, including of course, you have athletics fields and that sort of thing when you start adding your high school. And so um, that begins to consume your land considerably. 
uh, when you start adding the high schools and all to it. But Started out with a with a slightly lower enrollment at Buchanan than any other middle school, I believe, at least around the city of Murfreesboro. I'm not I'm not sure about the Laverne and Rock Springs and Smyrna Middle, but you've also done some rezoning. Am I right on that? And, and we did. We, we've zoned some additional students there, but and I misstated a while ago. I said it's the Jennings Jones property. But when we started this process, the Jennings Jones and then this the Maple development both announced and started in the Jennings Jones situation um, was such that they, they're already um, advertising to pour curbs and roads and that sort of stuff and the Maples made their major announcement. So when, honestly, when the board was, was sitting down having public hearings and all, we started getting flooded from, with this information from developers that we really didn't realize was in place. So um, the, the last thing you want to do is to try to snatch kids from one place, you know, put them one place and then turn around two or three years later and move them again if you can. So the, in the board's wisdom, and I think wisely, we probably are better off to leave some reserve at Whitworth Buchanan because they're gonna start building these immediately so that, that, that you don't come two years down the road and have to zone that again. Uh, allow it some time to grow. And so without maybe adding the addition. So that was the thought process with the information that occurred in the middle of our zoning consideration. Well, the Blackman sixth grade looks like it's going to be a success. You know, it's a great so. idea. And we probably we want to at least be in a position where we can right. emulate that if we right. want to. If we buy this property, you don't have to do that next year. We'll just do it as, right. as the kids come. But once, as you said, it's the, if that property is developed, it's, you're not going to go out there and buy eight or nine or ten houses and knock them down. You know, it's, it's a little high per acre, but it is what it is. You know, we could, I mean, the county doesn't buy money for investment, but if you decided you didn't need it and wasn't going to do it, it would probably sell pretty easy for that or more if the other developments, if the road stubbed out and that sort of stuff. I'm not near as cognizant of the price of land as at least five or six people in this room. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the answer question that I would like to have answered, we can't answer. And that, and that would be when you need this property, which is, which is, let's just say it's four years from now. Let's just say it is. What will the price be then? I'm interested in it, that. It, that will not be available and because they'll put houses correct. on or, or Because they told us they're going to start developing near, nearest the school. Am I right? The area that they choose to develop first is that area that really kind of surrounds us. It's not that they're starting way over somewhere else and we'll get to this. We were told that this was the area they were going to do early on. Yeah, that's true. Would the committee entertain uh, a possible motion on number eight on the one we're discussing right now since we have already discussed it perhaps thoroughly? We have a motion for you there if you're interested in that motion. Well, we're interested. <laughs> you want me to read? Yes, sir. I'll go, be glad go right to do that. <laughs> Recommend motion to request the Rutherford County Commission fund the purchase of 5.5 .5 acres adjoining Whitworth Buchanan Middle School for a sixth grade annex from the Maples Family Partnership at $70,000 per acre and up to 2500 in surveying costs as presented. Committee, you've, you've heard a motion. I'll make Discussion. that motion. Sir? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay. And second. Mr. Jordan uh, and Mr. Phillips already beat you to it, Ms. Cook. Okay. Is there any further discussion on this motion? It's a wise move. The property is a little high, but it is what it is. We don't want to be out there condemning anybody's property and no, like that. Don't. We'd spend just as much <clears> money. <throat> you know, they're offering to sell it. We need to buy it. We need it. We just need to buy it our lips and move forward in my opinion. Ms. Cook, did you want to say anything else? Okay. Any any other comments from Health Ed? Call the roll please, Michelle. Commissioner Allen? Aye. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Will Jordan? Yes. Commissioner Phillips? Aye. Commissioner Serena? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. 
Um, Mr. Odom, we might as well go back to number three and bite the bullet. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. We've heard a lot the last few years, especially about per pupil expenditures and, and how we compare to the rest of the state. Are, are we, can you explain that in a little bit more detail as to why ours is significantly lower than the state? And are we actually comparing apples to apples since our system is so much bigger uh, than the rest of the state? Uh, are we actually comparing uh, like systems? Um, this does, and I've said this to you before, it doesn't include the new buildings and all that you're doing in Rutherford County because of the growth. This is operating funds. Um, we're able in some ways to do it less because there is some economy in scale, to be honest with you. I mean, we have high schools, Blackman was 25, 2600, you remember, largest high school in the state. Most of our high schools run around 2,000. We add another assistant principal or two and another guidance, and you tend to operate. When you get into many of these smaller counties where their students are, are not as compact and they go out in, in a large county, they're, they're having to build more schools or transport certainly further. So, <coughs> excuse me, we have some economy of scale. I, and I think another thing, again, is the energy savings, the metal roads that, where they're spending more money on some things like that. We've gotten better at reserving that. But, but the, the place where we would be more equal in, um, you still, everybody has the same pupil-teacher ratio. Um, we have actually been able to reduce in recent years, uh, if you look at the if state report cards, you'll find many school systems in the state are running something like 14% in students in special education. Well, you know, you, you take 14% of that 40,000 and you find out how many students might have to be served for special education. Rutherford County has gotten that percent to down around 11%. Now, how do we do that? We do it with professional learning communities. We do it by building interventions in to the schools. So we're picking kids up already before RTI. We're picking kids up and being able to do intervention and to meet these needs for kids that are behind more quickly and again more economically um, than many other school systems. So I, I think the school board, the school system, you as a commissioner, we, we've done some very smart things. So I think that accounts for a lot of it. And, and if you consider those factors, I guess you could argue are we comparing apples and apples? Pieces of it we are, but because of our economy of scale and because I think we've done a better job than some others is part of their issue. Now, probably more clearly, if you really want to compare us a little bit, um, uh, our Williamson counties, the Wilson counties, the Montgomery counties, uh, take a look at people like us. You know, another thing that's really, uh, people don't realize this now, but you had most of our city and Rutherford County together. We're bigger than Hamilton County. You know, they're like, 43, 44,000, something like that. We're 41,000, most of us down here at 7,000. We're four or 5,000 larger than Hamilton County is now. You know, so some of those large intercities, we're the fifth largest school district in, in the state of Tennessee, basically now. Um, so um, it, you look at those other school districts larger than us, I think you'll find um, their per people costs are gonna be higher. We're at, outperforming most of those, you know, academically when you look at it. Um, so I, I just think a lot of people before me and, and now, uh, we're doing some some smart things to, to do as much with the tax dollars we can and still have a high quality system. I've rambled all over it. I don't know, <laughs> try to answer your question. But. It, it, it's the perfect answer, it's the kind of answer that I was looking for. The, 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 point is brought up pretty much on a regular basis every year that our per pupil spending is less than quote yeah. the state average and, and and to the way it comes across to me on TV and to the general public is that we're not spending mm -hmm. enough and and yeah. I, I'm 
of a different opinion of that. Yeah. We're spending our money better than I some other should. school systems are spending it. And I just wanted that explained because, to me, it should be a badge of honor rather than we're not doing right. our job. I understand what you're saying. Thank you. That's one other thing, if I might, Mr. Chairman, we, we talked about a, a growth rate of 2.9, I think this year, 2.9%. Uh, and if you look back over it through the years, uh, it, it's been as high as 5% and, you know, as low as 1%. But 3% is probably about the average uh, that we've had over the last 10, 15 years. Uh, but right now, the, the position that our county is in, are we talking about a 3% growth rate external? I, I'm trying to... It, that, that, is, that is an increased enrollment. Right. So when we said that we grew 2.9%, that would be 2.9% more students in student enrollment than the prior year. The problem is when we had five and six percent, we were taking five and six percent of thirty thousand. We're now taking three percent of forty thousand. And that's what I said is not fair with the state's growth when they give out the growth funds, they look only at percent. It's not totally fair. But but are we growing external to the county or internal to the county as far as those uh, students? With the population in the county, are we growing internal to the county or are we still getting a lot of external people moving in and bringing kids with them and those types of things? Uh, it's, it is primarily external. We, when we opened magnet schools and stuff, we did pick up some kids from um, other places that people were private education, that sort of thing, have come back to us, but most of it's external. And, and you bring up another very good point. I mean, we know sitting here that probably the average homeowner, somewhere between 900 and Fourteen hundred dollars a year will be their property tax on their home. We know it takes a little over three thousand dollars for the county share for every student in Rutherford County. You know, so people keep saying growth will pay for itself. It, it doesn't initially. The, the thing where we make up some of it, the avenue has been great for sales tax. Uh, and every time I get a chance, I tell people, buy in Rutherford County, <laughs> you know, because that's another way where you keep us from having to raise property tax if you purchase in Rutherford County. And we're beginning to draw people from surrounding counties to our, to shop here. That helps us too. But if it weren't for that, we would really be hurting if we weren't able to have some growth in sales tax along with this. Mr. Hood, may I? Sure. I, I keep... I've given you the graph before of our growth. I, I looked at two 10-year periods. I've, I've got those numbers from 91, 92 on. So I went from 13, 14 back 10 years, and then I went back the next 10 years. In both of those 10-year periods, our average was a little over 4%. So we had some years at 5.5. We had some at just under 2. but our compound growth rate was a little over four for both of those 10-year periods, which was higher than I thought it would be, especially the most recent 10-year period. At 2006-07, I see you've yeah. got your fact book there. That was a big year, wasn't it? Close yeah. to 1,800 yeah, it students. Yeah. So some, of those, some of those things, we, I know we've got into some issues in the past. Uh, Chairman Hodge is well aware that it appears that all of the not all, but a lot of the schools that we're building are north of Rutherford County. All of the high schools, okay, the way I understand it. And we've got half of the county sitting out here. And is, I'm just afraid that sometime in the future, uh, 20 years, somewhere down the road, we're going to start growing in one end of the county and be overbuilt in the other part of the county. I, I, I'm just, is, is there somebody somewhere out there looking at that and kind of coordinating some of these things with uh, the Regional Planning Commission or any of those types of ideas that we keep growing you know, and, and we're building high schools really close to each other. You know, really close. Yeah. So we got half of the county over here somewhere. Could, could there be or should there be something done to encourage some growth elsewhere and not to all, all of a sudden we've got a, a, a large county that's almost cut in half. So, you know, those types of things are, should be a concern for us 10 years from now, Terry, and 20 years from now, and 40 years from now, and 
where are we going to continue to grow? If you continue to grow in the, the northern half of the county, I call it the northern half of the county, but if you keep growing in that northern half of the county, are we going to still keep building high schools there? Uh, so, you know, there are, I just don't know if, 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 if we're doing a good enough job planning to look at the way we want this county to look over the next 40, 50 years. Um, Stewart's Creek High School opened this year with about 1,340 something. Um, we did grandfather into, into Blackman, into Smyrna and Laverne, juniors and seniors. Uh, you know, they're letter, they're on the team, that sort of thing. Um, we already know from just looking at that grandfather and expiring that Stewart's Creek High next year will be 1,600 and something because of that grandfather. But what's happening also is that grandfathering expires, depending on how much is built, gives us a little bit more reserve at Smyrna High, a little bit more reserve at Laverne High, a little bit more reserve at Stewart's Creek High. So personally, for the short term, I think the high school situation may actually be a little bit better on the north end over the next several years than maybe it is some here with that Stewart's Creek High addition to us. Well, it, it appears that when we build a school, uh, those of us, Steve, that have been around here for a long time, and we talked about the Blackman project in the 1990s, and it was unbelievable. You know, we would be putting a, a campus together for a school, and and it, I don't mean to say it was in the middle of nowhere, because it wasn't, but, but it didn't look anything like then what it looks now. And could the same thing happen if we looked at building a campus somewhere on you know this end of the county versus this end of the county I it's, it's just I think ideas at some point in time we have to start thinking about uh, if you build it they will come that kind of thing so I, I just have this these <coughs> concerns you know and I'm and I'm old enough to know that it probably won't affect me 30 years from now but but it's going to affect my kids and my kids kids and those kinds of things and I just am concerned that what our county will look like and, and are we doing a good enough job in planning for the next 30, 40, 50 years for our residents. So it's just a thought and I don't know that it's a good thought, but it's a thought that I can't get rid of out of my mind as to what we're, what we're doing as far as planning. I know we're building right now because that's where the need is, but it seems like every, especially high school that we built are, are on this end of the county. And you know, Laverne's growing, Smyrna's growing and all of those things are good. But at some point in time, I just don't know that, that we've not almost divided the county in two. You know, this is the county, half the county, this county over here doesn't have hardly a tenth of the population that this half has. And are we utilizing uh, our, our land the way that we should be utilizing it? So just the thought, I don't know what, what all that means. Commissioner, I think you're right on top of something if I could insert here for just a second. But I think lot, uh, item eight addresses that because of the footprint of Whitworth and Buchanan and the opportunity for the high school there, the additional land purchase gives us a buffer against that subdivision. It allows that middle school annex. It makes that high school still possible there on that construction pad. And what the board is seeing is the development of the Jody Jackson Parkway and the opportunity there. We're gonna see exactly what you're saying. The alarming thing for the board is the pace at which these things are occurring because the development is coming so quickly and we so appreciate the action tonight that allows us to keep pace and stay ahead of that. We're ready to put that high school in place at Whitworth Buchanan with the small adjustment we made this evening and that will be the one for that south end of the county. Well, wisely, the commission did approve the board's purchase of enough at Rockvale for a new high school and a middle. And the same at the Whitworth Buchanan to mention tonight. So you, you've done some hedging against increased cost to allow two more high schools on this end to be constructed. And I'm with you, when Joe B. Jackson joined 70 over there, uh, there's a lot of open land to develop. If I can, let me add something too. That we have a man that devote some time to looking at that and working with the planners. He goes to the planning committee meetings and to, uh, our planner. to watch out for, for not only rezoning, but where we're going to need a high school. And right now with development all over the county like you need it, it's hot spots for us trying to figure out where to put the next high school 
our next middle school. And uh, we are, our school board does try to keep an eye on it. We actually did the pad, if you remember, for the, at Rockvale and Whitworth Buchanan. So when you do construct it, it's even going to be somewhat less than it would have been ahead of time. Would it be fair to say that the, that the next high school, whenever that, and this, this board may have to make that request within the next four years, we don't know. But if they do, that the next high school will be south of Murfreesboro. I, I, I think that's a fair statement, it, well, but I'm not, I'm not saying it is. I mean, it sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> but Cannon or Rockvale will be y'all's choice. Say that I would say you're definitely correct. You know, we actually have, uh, on the plans, there is an addition for Siegel um, that can be added because when that was built, we had them stub off and do an addition to Siegel. So if that area were to grow, you have a little bit of reserve there to not do core but build classroom additions at Siegel. So uh, there's been some wise decisions made over the last several years to try to look ahead. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hodge didn't ask me to read this, but it is in your cover letter, and I underlined it last night when I was going over it, and I'll just read it aloud. It's just the last three lines here um, that uh, Chairman Hodge commented to the budget meeting that this budget that we're now discussing um, is a conscientious effort to cut to the bare minimum but shared universal concern of the entire board. It also produces significant uneasiness uneasiness if student enrollment increases by 1200 which is the three percent really not that's really not quite enough but 1200 or more in 2014 and 2015 and i was just um sort of wondering we didn't mr hodge and i didn't discuss it but at, at the rate that jobs are pouring in here uh, and it seems like we read something in the paper just about every week or so. Um, somebody's moving here and et cetera, and they're building apartments like mad. Uh, what if it goes over the 1240? What, what if it went to 1500? We're or, in trouble. <laughs> I mean, I could tell you, and again, of course we've shuffled portables and haven't purchased them in many years, but we could find ourselves, if you, if you get up in that 1500 range, of being trying to address it. We just do not have reserve capacity. You know, that, that's what I said a while ago when I said if you come in at 19.1 or 2 on your teachers, you, you just do not have places where you can absorb. Because uh, where they're building them now is not where we have space, other than Whitworth Buchanan. We do have some space, you know, there. But you just don't have a lot of reserve. Um, you're going to see elementary and middle issues down in the north end of the county most immediately because uh, Rock Springs, uh, that one, their numbers are anticipated to be over 1,100 next year for the middle school. Uh, you can't add on there much with kind of where it's built. So uh, we anticipate elementary issues possibly very quickly in that area and middle. Committee, they have responded to some of our questions, but maybe not all. Uh, if, if you have a health ed committee and, and then budget, to, if you have a a question here, and we're, we're, we're dealing with the approval of the total budget here, number three. Um, now would be a terrific time to, to um, speak right up. Well, we've had a lot of good conversation, but very little of the last 30 minutes conversation has been to do with this budget. That's correct. We know we're going to need another elementary <laughs> middle school in the short term. We know we need to pay in certain places. But I'd like to ask Ms. Nolan a question. If we approve this budget that's presented can we cover that without a tax increase because i don't think there are any commissioners that are willing to raise taxes two years in a row and if we cannot then i think we're going to tear this budget apart and find some money and i don't really want to do that and i appreciate what the school board's done the last few weeks they've really cut a bunch out of it but personally i don't think there's a single vote on the commission for a tax increase hmm? okay I don't think they didn't do it election. I think we just did it last year. Like we in good conscience can cents. come back and raise taxes two years in a row. Okay, you did five cents at the end of the last budget cycle. And we are coming into this fiscal year, the current year using 12.3 million of our fund balance on a budgetary basis. 
we're using 12 million. So on a budgetary basis, that leaves us right now with about 13.4 million. Now the difference, what Jeff has alluded to, is 12.8. So you're pretty much wiping out on a budgetary basis everything that you've got in fund balance. Not even mention our policy of reserve. I mean. Right. So now, now we've got to somehow come up with how are we going to come up with this reserve mm -hmm. number. So this is where Jeff, this is where we're kind of wanting to wait to where we close out May and we get the monies from the trustee. We don't get those monies until we close mm -hmm. out to where we get those estimates. But let's just do some hypotheticals. That's about 9.2 million that we need to come, that we need to have in our fund balance based on 3% of the 306, 307 million dollars. I'm rounding because I really don't know. And speaking with Jeff, if we don't spend six of the current budget, if we can somehow manage additional two million in additional revenue, I'm eight. I'm still short a million two. That's about two cents. You could reduce debt service. Now we've been watching debt service because we know what's coming. So <laughs> I'm not, don't ask me, can we build all these schools and can we build judicial centers without raising taxes when we're moving money out? So, but let me tell you what we're doing. This is painful. This is painful for what we're setting ourselves up for next year. And I mean, I can't emphasize it. This is painful, especially if the growth is more. So that's my concern. So we might can quit. Honestly, I thought this year when we adopted the tax for this current year, I thought that was the year we were going to have to settle up. We were able to squeak by. So potentially squeak by again. But I mean, the debt service is the only fund that's got some flexibility in it. But watch out for the next year is all I'm say. I mean, you know what's happening, what we're doing, and how we're setting the stage for the next fiscal year. Well, we still got some issues on the budget at the very last page of our budget about raises, mm -hmm. some other issues. And the last page over here I'm looking at, this is 75 new positions, correct? The teaching so, is 62 and a half. I guess the total I'm looking at is 75. You're right, Commissioner. So what's what's the I guess what's the raise figured in here? The only thing we've done is uh, there's three individuals. I think that the others are are just step. Um, that's just like your system, Kansas and this building. That they got another year's experience in that step. Uh, you know, on the state. What was the state salary schedule and our salary schedule? So it's just is that, a step. Is that across the board? You say, or is that well, the minimum of one plate? And we did add. Uh, I did. Uh, let me let me take back one statement. That we add, we checked to see in everybody's step those that were beyond getting step raises to give them one hundred and twenty dollars to try to cover the increased cost of the insurance. I really didn't want somebody to get a check less next year than they got this year. Right. I mean that was the drive for that. So it's $120 or whatever their step might be in that particular, and that's classified and certified both. Well, we're working on those issues too in the journal. So, I mean, that's why I'm asking these questions. Uh, tomorrow night, we're gonna look at this. This is not our vote tonight for the budget committee, but uh, it is for health and ed. So I just, I was wondering what was figured in on steps and raises at that. Well, when we had the 200, 310, 314, that way, the governor was saying, gonna give 2%, you know, you look at your 2% classified, 2% your certified employees. So a lot of those original figures included those situations, but that's that's gone with the exception of at least that $120. Okay. 
you know, that, that's what that was. We were given an, an approximation for what the step increases would cost in the general fund budget. I think it was maybe between two and three hundred thousand dollars. Do you have an approximate amount of what it would cost in this budget? You got that sign. Uh, probably a million and a quarter to a million and a half. And I I don't have an exact number of that. Is the state helping us with any of that? No. When the state mandates a pay, uh, a, a pay increase, they help out a little bit, but in this case, they're not mandating right. any, and so there is no state support. Right. Well, the longevity pay and stuff is per contract, is it not? That's not something we can play with, is that right? It's on our, built into our salary schedules. Yeah. We're dealing with a large number of people. It's not much money per person, but a large number of people. It's those 4,700 employees that you have um, certified and classified together. That's it. Um, there's a little bit in there for five additional bus routes. Again, about half the kids you grow in is going to ride a bus. You know, so stuff like that. Our, our teaching positions, we should be covered with three a tad over three percent growth you said 1.2 to 1.5 yes sir and that's just sticking with the plan right right now that's not in this plan no that is in this version it is in this version. yes sir 306 million that, that's yeah that's in there Okay. You know, we've had some positions we've already changed. Like, we didn't fulfill a psychologist that left. Um, Mr. Zago's been looking as a, if enrollment changed at a school for a high school course, we've closed that course in some instances. And kids got to be somewhere every period. But we, we've, we've done some of those things y'all are not seeing. It's just adjustments we've made internally to try to bring it down um, in this. We cut out, we, we were, had an original million dollars in the budget to try to upgrade technology. You know, the city added five million for technology. Um, we were trying to catch up a little with that. We took all of that out. We got our normal replacement cost, but nothing to upgrade the technology piece and things like that. That those came out of that earlier budget. Nurses. Nurses. One, yeah, we had took out extra nurses. We took we out two other nurses. Two other nurses. We had three school technology specialist to help with the technology piece. We took those pieces out. So, I mean, it, it's been reduction. In, for us, with about 83%, uh, Dr. Baum, is it, it's going to be people. You know, when, we cut, when we cut something, you typically are going to have to cut people, uh, especially if you haven't gone up on utilities and your other associated things with it. it it's got to be people to get dollar figures. You know, I, Jeff does an average now, somewhere with fringe benefits and everything, somewhere 55,000, 60,000 per certified person that you hire. So if you're gonna have to cut five or 600,000, that, that's where we have to start looking most of the time. Well, I, I'll be honest with you, I like seeing, here's, here it is, here it is. This is what it is, but I do miss choice A. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> You're the first one that's told us it was here. here. <laughs> but, uh, and the reason why is, you know, and we're all elected here, but your constituents, your family, your business people, why don't you run it like a business? Those type of statements and questions and comments, you can explain. Here we are if we do this. Here we are if we do this. Here we are if we do this. If we take this out, this is where we are. And it, when people see, you know, where you're at and what you're cutting. Uh, I mean, they didn't see, and I haven't seen, all the things y'all have already cut before I got here or where it's been adjusted or where it's been tweaked. And, you know, and, and you, the school board, have, uh, and superintendent and everybody have, have crunched it and said, you know, this this is what we can do. You know, this is all we can do. This is, this is bare bones here, so to speak. I commend you for all that hard work. It just, uh, to me, when it comes to you in a nice little package, here it is, all you gotta do is approve it. It's, it almost takes uh, the fun and excitement. 
<laughs> you know, that, what, what Jeff built a lot of this around close to 1,200 growth. If we grow 13 to 1,400, if that were to happen, you know that the state ADM monies will follow a year later. A year later. <laughs> and, and, but the growth is not going to be there. But we still know, even if it follows a year later, that, that roughly we, we know that it cost us about is 50.8 or 51% is our local dollars for each teacher that we have to put in. So even if we grow more and the state sends half that salary, we still got to come up with locally that other half. That, well, that's the issue. Your budget went up less than your growth <coughs> percentage wise. Yes. And stuff. So that's, that in itself tells you it's a conservative budget mm -hmm. because my. I grew up in the house with a school board member, and he always said you can at least take growth and cost of living, you know, and add that to your budget. And if you don't grow the, anything else, that's how much it's got to go up. And and you actually went backwards this year if you look at those parameters. But you know, our problem is figuring out how to how to pay for it because the state's kind of done us in a little bit this year. And, and you all said last year you could find the money to open Stewart's Creek, Creek, and you did, but you didn't say anything about the operating it perpetually so we're going to deal with this. <laughs> and, and we borrowed against any fund balance to do yeah. some of the things that we did yeah. that's that's why it's coming back yeah. to buy commissioner p actually he's touched on what i was going to ask i've heard that you cut somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 positions current positions is that true i mean it's, you might not have a total there it's, it's hard for me to no, no. it's hard for me to quantify because we we do it like I say, we go into a high school, if a career in technical education, you don't have as many business teachers, mm -hmm. you know, kids got to be somewhere we may say, okay, we're not going to fund that position anymore. Um, and uh, we have pending right now what we're looking at, we've got some of this RTI, some of the interventionists, we, we've kind of held that back to see what happens. Um, if you're looking for the ABC, it, it would have to be some positions. I mean, I don't see how... I mean, uh, you can see it as we have, and you see no increase there. You can go line item by line item. You don't see a plus there. That that you just have to reduce your number of personnel and hope that you don't get the 1,400, 1,500. That, that, I don't know another way to deal with it. But but I, it will ultimately affect our ability to deliver high quality service. It's going to. I mean, when you reduce your bus numbers. Somebody's going to wait a little longer. There's going to be a second run of that bus. I mean, it, it, it's not totally comfortable. And you, 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 anytime you do, intentionally or not, you're going to raise class size a tenth or something. I mean, it's just going to happen. Or you might have gone ahead and given a teacher, not yet, not yet. It, it, it's just the nature of it. Well, and and I, I would think we have repurposed or in some instances because of programs that did not have the enrollment, 20 plus positions. I would say so. What would you say, Mr. Dago? You've been looking yes, at Yes, sir, that. that's a correct statement. We've been repurposing positions. We repurposed more than 50 positions uh, last year to open Stewart's Creek between HR and, and my staff. We worked closely together with other school staff. And I want to say the number was 54 positions last year in order to open Stewart's Creek. When you repurpose that number of positions in a single year, that makes everything tight. And then once we've gone over somewhere between 20 and maybe 30 positions this year in the schools, now it's just like Mr. Odom had stated earlier in this in this meeting, was that when you add six students, and I'll just take a, a school, for example, Strips Creek Elementary School, if I add three students in the K through three, because that's the 20 to one band of students, that the state requires us to keep that teacher-student ratio, it may put me over that 20.2 number that would cause me to incur a fine. And then if I had three more students in the 4-5 range, which is a K-5 school, that may put me over that 25.2 band in that, that grade level band. And I'd have to hire two positions to, to maintain my student-teacher ratio of 20 to 1 or less or 25 to 1 with only six students moving into the zone. So it'll cost you 120000 And we are, I, I don't want to exaggerate, but Mr. Odom is absolutely correct. We are that close in at least 25 of our 46 schools. 
And I've looked at it. I've cut every single position that's available over that number, either last year or this year, and it's like a judge did say, I'm the instructor curriculum person, and it's going to hurt our instruction. And that's and that speaks to also how do we educate for twelve hundred dollars uh, a student less than anywhere else, if, or the state average. We do that with no slack in the rope, no slack in the rope, and that speaks to this budget question and this budget issue. Couple no slack in the rope with two point three percent budget increase, two point nine percent or two point seven, two point nine, but less than that budget increase and we're talking about a skeleton budget not a conservative budget a skeleton budget that if three three and three point two three point three percent growth occurs we come back to Mr. Odom's comment of we're in trouble <coughs> Mr. Chairman yes sir uh, it's something this bugged me for a couple of years so I may as well bring it up tonight because it goes with a lot with what Mr. Jordan started and I don't think there's been some of us that will we voted for increases in the past in this, but nobody wants to this year. The state puts us in a box because we've got one method is all it is. We, 10 years ago, we looked at trying to get some other methods of funding and they shut us down. But they keep piling it on. You just said the mandates. Uh, we got the four years of math in high school, the uh, chemistry and Physics. physics alternatives and the ESLs to go along with it. And that cost us reoccurring every year between three quarters of a million and a million dollars. They give us nothing for it, but we got a point. Where, somewhere in there, there's got to come a point where you consider looking in to going to court with it. I mean, the small school systems did it in the 80s and they got the BEP formula in. But now they keep, every year there's something more. This RTI thing, next year they gave us a leeway on the high schools, but next year those in high school are gonna come in. We've got graduation coaches now. It's not enough that a kid can go to school and, you know, but we gotta have some people to help them to get through their classes. You know, it's somewhere, and that's basically gotta be done to keep up with the federal and the state laws that have come out, is what it is. You gotta have people watching. So that's my point. You got to be talking about it. You got to look at it sometime. We're, we're going to have to do it. Or, you know, because <laughs> I, I can't see just a property tax going to it every year. And, you know, you're, the rents would go so high on apartments and stuff around here that those people wouldn't want to pay, uh, the owners wouldn't want to pay for those commercial buildings that people would start finding other places to live. Oh, yeah. Huh? That would help the growth. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> if they shut down some apartments, you're right. <laughs> I'd like to comment to that, Mr. Schaefer. I'm sure most of you followed this last yeah. legislative system or session. Yeah. I firmly believe that education department is, is shifting more of the burden to the locals. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know how much y'all follow it. Uh, I also believe they're trying to get rid of public education. And we've been on our legislators. Uh, if you're aware of the vouchers and charter schools and all that. Uh, up to this point, we haven't made a whole lot of headway. Uh, as far as uh, we met with them a year ago and thought we were on the right track to where they weren't going to favor us. These items here. But our fear right now is funneling, continue to funnel money from public education to these other endeavors, and uh, uh, we'll continue to, to, to move forward and uh, be pretty vocal. But in response to some of your questions, I, I think that's, that's where education vote uh, is let the locals take care of it. And I think that's why we're running the problems right now. And we'll continue to run it. But your point is that they're not giving us the means to do it. I'm sorry? I said the problem is, though, they're not giving the locals the means to do it. I understand. That's, uh, that's what we've been trying to battle with. But so far, we haven't hit a whole lot of headwinds. I'm going to ask Mr. Sandlin for a little help here. But uh, the steering meets with uh, the legislators every January. And uh, I, I believe... Uh, 
I believe this last time, we always ask about the BEP money, always. Somebody does on steering. Did they not promise us to send us the, exactly the same amount of money this year that they did last year? And they, they were pretty clear about not increasing it. They were going to send us the same money. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. We really need to get back on point here on three, but I, I mean, we can complain about the legislature all we want probably and, and perhaps be right. But uh, Mr. Blair. Mr. Chairman, I don't know if this is the appropriate meeting, but it, it certainly uh, plays a part. Maybe the budget would be a, a better place. Uh, you said tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Uh, but uh, a, uh, a, a line item that has always bar, uh, bothered Doris Jernigan, former board member and myself, is the $2 million that is paid into the Trustees Commission. And I understand that it's, it's state statute that it has to happen. But uh, it's our estimates that uh, maybe 1.8 million uh, of that is not utilized by the trustees' office, and it's sent back into the, the general budget. Uh, that is school school money, as far as I'm concerned. Is there a way that that could be utilized for us rather than just being tossed back into? Because our budget reflects that money, but that money is put back into the general fund. So again, I don't know if this is this is the meeting to address that, but that just seems like uh, robbing Peter and paying back Paul. It's all taxpayer dollars, though. I mean, if you took that away, we'd have to come up with three cents to put that back over on the other side. So. Well, but, but it's dedicated school money that uh, that's going to an office that's not going to utilize the uh, full amount. So I, I just I just find it a little puzzling. But we set the tax rate with a per certain percentage for schools, knowing full well that much is going to make the circle and come back in the other way. So yes, sir. it's it's all to me it's all taxpayer dollars. It's all Mr. And Ms. Homeowner out there money coming out of their pockets. You know, we're all family. <laughs> <laughs> Strongly concur. Again, using uh, Ms. Neely's favorite term to her sixth grade class for years. Let's stay on task here and um, let's look at uh, and, and see if we have other questions or comments about uh, about the budget in general. We've got numerous line items and um, comments to be made from Health and Ed uh, or questions from budget. We, we, we're staying on task, Michelle. <laughs> I guess we are anyway. <laughs> uh, okay, we, we have a motion here, um, and somebody needs to repeat it. We can we can do a number of different things, of course. Uh -huh. We can send it forward with no recommendation. Uh, I would recommend against that, but we can do that. We can recommend another figure, or we can approve this. And I sure would like to have a motion. Oh, I thought thought you said you had a motion. I had to leave the room from it. Do you have a motion? I, I, well, just have what's written here. Oh, the one written there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you know what that one is. <laughs> I haven't made a motion in five years since I've been chairman. I I can hand the um, gavel to Vice Chair Jordan and make a motion if that's what you wish, but um, come on now. <laughs> I think I've made it the last four or five years. I think it's somebody else's turn. <laughs> <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I move to forward the recommended motion on the budget with the favorable. Thank you, Commissioner Phillips. Second. Second from Ms. Cook. Discussion from Health and Ed. Motion is on the floor and you've heard it. Ms. Shelton is really eager to call the roll. And here she goes. Commissioner Allen.
Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Will Jordan? Yes. Commissioner Phillips? Aye. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Cafeteria fund budget number four, on bottom of page two, middle of page two. Um, I'll repeat the, the motion, the recommended motion that Mr. Oden's already, Oden has already read. Uh, approved 2014-15 centralized cafeteria fund budget is $17,630,000 in revenues, $18,333,292 in expenditures. That's his recommended motion. And need a discussion on that or someone needs to repeat the motion for me. I'll make that motion to prove that one. That's an easy one. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Jordan. Such, such courage. Uh, <laughs> a second. I might just vote no now. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You made the motion. Uh, Commissioner Suryon, thank you, sir, for the second. Um, any, any comment? Discussion? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Allen? Commissioner Cook? Commissioner Will Jordan? Yes. Commissioner Phillips? Aye. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Number five, give you a second to look that over again. The recommended motion is right at the bottom of the page. Capital Projects Budget Fund as presented. Ms. Odom? Uh, Ms. Allen is a um, five year plan. We approve that typically in, in November. We had one, you got one in about in November. Uh, we could have printed it. We got, we're going to have to revise it again. I know this next year, but that, we, they have, the board has not revisited it. Okay. Since November. What about it? Capital project fund. Capital project. Okay, Ms. Allen. All right. Right. Need a motion on number five? I've got a question. Yes, sir. Five and six. Five yes. is setting the rate and six is spending it, yeah. I guess. I mean, uh, I don't remember having different motions in the past. <clears throat> they're both the same one set fund, one set. Yes, seven. sir. This was a list. It could be incorporated again. It could, it, it, it could probably be, but six is itemizes it, so you probably could and do the motion one time. With both of them. I mean, if you wanted to do that. That's what you were asking. Yeah. If that's all right with the committee, we'll do that. Uh, just combine five and six. The capital projects fund. The cap, uh, six, of course, has the list of, uh, of um, Mr. Clardy's proposed list for the coming year. Um, it has to come back to you anyway when we get ready to expend it. So you're, you're going to see it again see, right. I mean, true. when those items come up one at a time. Well, let's combine them then in five and six. If I can get a motion from someone. Uh, Make a motion to approve five and six. Thank you, Commissioner Turner. A second? Second. Commissioner Allen, thank you. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Allen? Aye. Commissioner Cook? Aye. Commissioner Will Jordan? Yes. Commissioner Phillips? Aye. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. <laughs> Number seven is um, resolution to fund the capital projects with five cents of the property tax rate, which is, we've already discussed that, of course, to some extent, but we can discuss it some more, to return this fund, which has dropped through no anybody's fault to 4.51 returning to a nickel uh, i think that's that's fair but i'm not i'm not making a resolution here uh, i'll make a motion we table this until we set the tax rate or have further information and consider this later in the budget cycle second 
A second, Commissioner Phillips. Was that right? Commissioner Drayton made the motion. Any uh, any discussion on that? All right, please. Commissioner Allen? Aye. Commissioner Cook? Aye. Commissioner Will Jordan? Yes. Commissioner Phillips? Aye. Commissioner Serena? Yes. Commissioner George? Yes. Any other business, uh, Ms. O? No, sir. No, I told him not. That's Health Ed, uh, any? I forgot about that. Closing business? New business? Appreciate everyone very much. Great to see all of you. Consider us adjourned.